Hello again. So I made a basic video that talked about free body diagrams and no sooner had I finished it than I started to think of more complicated things you can do with a free body diagram and I started to think that I hadn't sold them very well or I, you might have come away not appreciating how important they can be in some problems. So I wanted to show you a few yuckier problems where using a free body diagram can free up some information that you maybe couldn't have gotten otherwise. And they especially come up when you have an object that has a bunch of pieces inside it. Because you can use free body diagrams to analyze not only the entire thing as a whole, but also individual pieces inside it. So what I've attempted to show here is a semi-tractor, 10 tons, or 10,000 kilograms, which is connected to two trailers, the first one 30 tons and then the one behind that 20 tons. and the engine of this truck is giving us 40 kilonewtons of force that's trying to move the entire trailer and the questions are going to be find the acceleration for the entire vehicle and also find how much force there is on this pink coupler here which holds the first trailer onto the tractor and how much force is on this orange coupler that holds the two trailers together We'll see if those forces have to be the same or or not, and to understand that we're going to do a series of free body diagrams. So let's see how you analyze something like this. The first thing we can do is we have this force which is trying to move the entire vehicle, so at first I would set up a free body diagram where this entire vehicle is our object. And because we're talking about the entire vehicle, we want a single mass for the entire vehicle, which would be 20 plus 30 is 50 plus another 10 is 60 tons or 60,000 kilograms. So for this first thing, we've got 60,000 kg. You can write 6 times 10 to the 4 if you like. And the force on it is 40 kilonewtons, which is 40,000 Newtons. There are vertical forces on this truck, but because semis rarely sink into the ground or float up into the air, I'm just going to focus on the horizontal forces this time. I know that we're going to have gravity pulling down, a normal force cancelling it out, assuming we're on good solid pavement, and so the horizontal direction is the only one where anything interesting will take place. So if we have this force, this is our only force, so it's our net force. I'm ignoring friction, we would get the acceleration of the vehicle equals F over M, which is 40,000 over 60,000, which comes out to the slightly awkward 0 0.667 meters per second squared. Okay. Now that we have that, because all these are coupled together, they always have to have the same acceleration or the same velocity. If they ever didn't, it would mean some parts were leaving other parts behind, and that the only way that could happen is if these couplers were stretching or if they just ceased to exist so that the pieces could move independently. Assuming that these pieces don't break, the vehicle always has to have one common velocity and one common acceleration. So this number applies not only to the whole vehicle, it applies to any of the smaller pieces that we find. And we can do some interesting stuff with that. Let's look at some smaller pieces of the vehicle and see what we can learn about them. We'll get rid of our whole vehicle free body diagram. What if we drew a frame that was just around the back trailer? If we're just looking at that, 20,000 kilograms, the only force acting on this, this isn't directly connected to the engine, the only thing pulling on it is this orange coupler. There's a tension in this coupler, it's like a rope made of steel. And I'll call that, 
I'll call the force in the first coupler F1 and the one in the second coupler F2. So in this trailer we just have F2 pulling this thing forward and F2 is not 40,000 newtons. F2, well we don't know what it is yet, but we know that this trailer has a mass of 20,000 and we know its acceleration is 0 0.667 meters per second squared. F equals ma can get us that force. Oops, sorry, not 6.67, 0 0.667. 20,000 times 0 0.667, 13,340. Newtons. You know what? I'm afraid I'm going to get some round off errors. This was, I rounded this to 0.667, but really it's 0 0.666666. So if I do this and don't round, what I actually get is 13,333.3 newtons. Let's have that extra little bit of precision just because we can. So this number is the tension in that second coupler. I'll put that in there. F2 is not 40,000, but 13,333 newtons. Okay, interesting. What about the middle car, or the middle trailer? We can set up a free body diagram for that too. I'm just going to move this frame and put it around the middle car. You can draw these any way you want and the only forces that matter for this one are this coupler is going to have a tension so it's pulling back in other words the red car is dragging back on the green car and slowing it down but on the front the tractor is actually pulling forward trying to move it forward so this car is going to have a force pulling back F2 and a force pulling forward F1 and we'll see what the total of those is when they're talking about free body diagrams they say that you're only counting external forces when you do one of these so when we were looking at the whole vehicle the only external force was this one the one that where the tires are putting friction into the road and that's driving the vehicle forward. When you look at an individual car you're looking for any forces that like pass through this frame around the object. Those are the only ones that pull on it or push into it. We aren't counting any internal forces that hold this vehicle together, only the ones that are acting from outside and can make it move. So this vehicle can drag it back, this one can drag it forward and we'll see what the overall effect is. So we have F2 pulling backwards because tension always pulls in towards the middle of a rope or a coupler. And we found that that was 13,333 newtons. Then we have an unknown F1 pulling forward. And because this is all part of the same vehicle, we know our acceleration is 0 0.6666666 meters per second squared. And we know our mass for this thing is 30,000 kilograms. Is that enough to get F1? Hope you said yes. Let's do it. Newton's second law says our net force equals ma. The net force is F1, I don't know what it is, plus negative 13,333. I had to pick one of these to be negative because they're in opposite directions, so I decided forward should be positive and backward or slowing down should be negative. I think that's reasonably fair. So those are our two forces. Together they are our net force, and they equal our mass of 30,000 times our acceleration of zero point lots of sixes. 
So if we multiply this out, we get F1 equals minus 13333. Three, three. Oh, I'm sorry, F1 plus. You can say F1 minus 13333, three, three, or you can say F1 plus the negative number minus 13333. Three, three. It's all good. Equals 30,000 times 0 0.66666 is going to be 20,000. If we want to solve this for F1, we take that 13333 to the other side, it becomes positive, and we get 33, really? 33333? Did I do that right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so the tension in the first coupler is 33333. forward. And just for kicks, let's do the cab or the uh, the tractor part. I learned recently that you shouldn't call this front part a truck because trucks have cargo capacity and the the cab or the tractor of a semi does not have that. There's no part of it that's designated for cargo really. So, so uh, if you like boring your friends with irrelevant facts, there's a good one for you. Um, if we do the cab, what forces act on the cab other than the vertical ones that we're ignoring? It's 10,000 kilograms, of course. We know that it's got 40 kilonewtons of force from the drive, w the drive tires. 40,000 newtons pulling forward, and We know the tension in this coupler is 33,333, so that's pulling backward. F net equals MA. So our net force is going to be a positive 40,000 from the engine, and then a negative lots of threes for basically the drag from the other two from the two trailers that's what is producing this coupling force equals the mass of the trailer or sorry the cab is 10,000 and its acceleration is 0 0.66666 does this work out if we do 40,000 minus 33333 we get 6667 and if we do 10,000 times this we get 6666 0.666, so yes, if this rounds, once we round it correctly, it looks like those numbers do match, so it all worked out. So, remember when you have something made of several pieces that you can do a free body diagram for the entire thing, treat it all like one object, or you can zoom in on an individual piece and just see what forces are acting on that one piece. And when you do that, you can find some of these internal forces that aren't so obvious. I think of this like the engine starts out with 40,000 newtons and it's saying, all right, I have that much force to move this entire vehicle. It's almost like the, the tractor keeps starts with the 40,000, keeps 6666 for itself, and then says, all right, I'll pass on the next 33333 to the rest, to the other two cabs, or sorry, using all the wrong words here, to the other two trailers. So 33333 comes through the coupler here. This, this trailer says, all right, I'm going to keep 20,000 of that for myself, which leaves 13333. I will pass that along to the last trailer, and that'll be just enough for him to accelerate the same as the rest of us. So this force gets shared between the three pieces so that they all end up at the same acceleration. If you're a larger mass, if you're a bigger piece, then you're going to keep more of that force and use it to move yourself. You'll pass on a smaller amount to whoever's behind you. So 
hope that made some kind of sense. I want to do one more that's pretty much the same idea, but with a small wrinkle built in. And again, we'll be doing free, free body diagrams for a couple of different pieces. And we'll throw in friction this time, just to show friction that we aren't scared of it. At least not too much. Okay. A problem that we like to torment people with is we'll have a table. And attached to the table, there is a pulley. And then we do this. We make we put a box or something on the table and to that box we attach a string which goes over the pulley and hangs down here and then on the bottom of the string we hang another mass another box and then we ask you all kinds of terrifying questions about what happens let's say uh, what do we need for masses here? Let's have, let's put six kilograms hanging over the edge and we'll make this eight kilograms and I said there'd be some friction here. Let's say that there's a friction force of, I won't have us calculate it this time, I'll just say Sorry, I know I'm right near the edge of your screen here. 20 newtons dragging back on on this because the box is dragging on the table. And the question will be, how fast does this system move when you let it go? So... First of all, why would this thing move at all? We have friction up here, but what happens is we have the weight of this box pulling it downward, and as this box pulls down, it's going to pull on the string, and that's going to drag the 8-kilogram box over here. Eventually, the 8-kilogram box will get dragged off the table, assuming this string isn't too long. So what's moving this entire thing is the weight of the 6-kilogram block. How much is that? The weight of something, or the gravitational force on it, is equal to how massive is it times how strong is gravity where you are. Mass is 6, gravity is 981, assuming we're on Earth. Six times nine point eight one is 5886. So, if we look at this entire system as one object, in other words, if we do a free body diagram that shows all of this in the yellow as a single thing, there are two external forces. We have gravity pulling this way, trying to make the object move like clockwise around the corner, and we have 20 newtons worth of friction trying to bog it down. And so for the entire system, system, we can say net force equals ma. The net force would be, now we need to choose a direction for this, and the directions for these problems are a little weird because we have this box moving horizontally and this one moving vertically. What we generally do with this kind of problem is we say anything that makes the system move clockwise is positive, meaning this box moving down while this one slides to the right, and anything that tries to make it move in the opposite direction, counterclockwise, which would mean the green box rising and the blue box moving to the left would be a negative force. That way we can use one sign convention for the entire thing and 
it kind of gets us around the problem of having this moving vertic this moving down while this is moving to the right. We just say both of those are positive because these two objects have to move as a unit, they're connected by a string. So if we're doing that, this 5886 is positive because it's trying to make the system move clockwise. We can call that a positive 5886. The friction is pulling against that, so we'd call that a negative 20 newtons equals the mass. I said I'm talking about the whole system, so the total mass is 8 plus 6 is 14 newtons, or sorry, 14 kilograms, yikes multiplied by an acceleration, which I don't know yet. 5886 take away 20 is 3886 equals 14a. So if we want the acceleration, take 3886 and divide by 14. And for that I get 2.7757 meters per second squared. Just like with the truck, now that we have this acceleration, that applies to the entire system. It also applies to just the green box or just the blue box. They're all moving as a unit, so they have to move at the same speed. If they weren't moving at the same speed, the string would have to break, and we don't normally get into that just now. So now that we have that acceleration, if we want, we can look at individual blocks and figure out what's happening with them. The follow-up question we would probably ask with this, after you've gotten the acceleration, is what is the tension in the string? And we can find that by looking at an individual object. When we were looking at the entire system, when I had the thing like this, we couldn't find the tension in the string because it was an internal force. It was just one of the forces that holds the system together. And you can't find internal forces generally from looking at the entire system at once. You have to go to somewhere where that string is an external force, which would mean doing a boundary that looks maybe like this. If we just look at this one block, then now gravity is an external force, and so is the tension pulling up. And that probably means we can solve for it. Let's see how we do. If we do the... Uh, it's green. Let's use green. If we just do the green block, again, we can write F net equals MA. So, net forces for this object. Now that I'm, or no, sorry, I was thinking about changing the sign convention, but it's not worth it. We'll just keep going with our positive negative that we already set up. We have gravity that's trying to move the thing clockwise, so that's a positive 5886. Plus, there's a tension in the string here, and tension always pulls in towards the middle of the string, meaning it's pulling up on the green block, and when we get over here, it'll be pulling to the right on the blue block. So that's our tension equals, we're just looking at the green block now, so the mass is 6. And our acceleration is 2.7757. 6 times 2.7757 is 16.6542. Six, five, four, two. So if we want t by itself, we subtract 5886 from each side. And we get that the tension is minus 42.2058. Does it make sense that it's negative? Well, negative forces are going this way, and that's exactly how we thought the tension should go. So, yeah, it does. The tension should be in this direction because it's pulling up on the green block, trying to keep it from falling off the table, or falling to the floor. So, if they wanted the tension, we could get it that way, or 
because this is a practice, let's do more work than we have to. What if we use the blue block? Can we analyze that and find the tension? If we're doing this block, the tension's coming out of it this way because tension's always in towards the middle of the string. How does this one set up? Blue block. As usual, we can start with F net equals MA. What's the net force on this one? We have tension pulling forward. Not sure how much. We, we kind of do. We're, pretend we don't know the tension yet and that we're just finding it. And we have friction dragging back with a force of 20 newtons. That's negative because it's in the counterclockwise direction. Equals mass of just the blue block is 8. And our acceleration, we said, is 2.7757. So, 2.7757 times 8 gives me 22.2056. T minus 20 equals 22.2056. Take the 20 to the other side, and we get that the tension is... 20 plus 22 is 42.2056. Basically the same thing we got going the other way. There's a tiny difference in the fourth decimal place, which is probably my fault for rounding a little too much. But definitely the same tension. On this block, the tension is considered to be negative because it's pulling this block up counterclockwise. But on the blue block, the tension is this way because it's pulling to the right, dragging this block to the right and off the table. So the thing about strings is that they pull this they pull equally hard on both ends but they pull both ends in opposite directions strings pull in towards their centers so the directions you get can differ a little bit but i hope that gives you some idea how you can use a free body diagram to get a lot of good details out of a system because you can look at the big picture and get information about the entire system at once, and then you can zoom in on individual pieces and find out even more stuff by looking at each of the pieces as an isolated object. So when you see those, you'll have some idea what to do. Have fun with that.